Hello, my name is Pavan Kumar. In my last video, I have shown that what are the solutions available for Kubernetes cluster to create it as a highly available. We have talked about stacked highly availability solution and external ETCD solutions. In this video, I am going to explain the architectures that I'm going to deploy as a practical to show you that how you can create Kubernetes cluster highly available. In my video, I am going to deploy stacked ETCD high availability for Kubernetes cluster. So this, if you, are, if you will check this architectures, this architecture is basically, uh, I have three master nodes at here. As I've told that you have minimum three master node required because one master node will be as a backup. You can create your control plane, I mean master, with the two nodes, but this will not work out. Let's say if one node will get down, your master still will not be able to be accessible. So if you want to access your master each and every time, you must have at least three master nodes. You can have more than three master nodes in your architectures for the best solutions. But in my architecture, I am having three master nodes as a minimum master node counts and I will have only one more worker node to show you that how you can create worker nodes and join with a master control plane. You can have, you must have more than one worker node uh, for the best solutions and the performance as well. So in this architecture, I have used three master nodes and one load balancer so I am going to, you can create this architecture anywhere if you are using, if you are using cube ADM solutions. So you can choose your physical hardware, I mean physical hardware, physical data center. You can also create this on compute cloud or you can also create in uh, AWS platform, EC2 instance, by creating EC2 instance. So and anywhere you can get the platform, you can get the servers and uh, you, if you are using cube ADM, then you can have you can use the solution to deploy your Kubernetes cluster as a highly available. So I am going to use the platform AWS at here. So this whole will be deployed on AWS EC2. So let me explain you that what are things I'm going to use. I'm going to create an elastic load balancer that will be internal elastic load balancer. So this will be my elastic ELB. So I will call it internal load balancer. I'm not using external load balancer because I don't want to publish my API server of master to be accessible from outside. So this solution is only for the private network. So you don't have to go for the outside. So that's why I have selected ELB as an internal load balancer. I am going to create three EC2 instance. So first I will have ELB internal. Then I will have two, three EC2 instance for master. And third, I will have one worker node to show you that how you can join and create worker node into the control panel. So that's it for this video. I will catch you in the next video for the creation of internal ELB and EC2 instance for master nodes and the worker nodes.